Hello students, welcome back to Edipedia Word Videos. My name is Sethi Singh and my topic for the presentation is 10th section of the chapter Transport in Plants. In this section of the video, we will be discussing about the translocation in the phloem. In my previous section of the presentation, I have already taught you about the cells of a phloem. Phloem is a conducting tissue, okay, that transports sugar and other items sugar which are formed by plant during photosynthesis they are an essential component of plant nutrition like water sugar usually in the form of sucrose though glucose is the original photosynthetic product which is carried throughout the parts of a plant by a vascular system phloem is a vascular tissue students i have already taught you which is responsible for transporting organic nutrients around the plant body that carries dissolved sugars from leaf which is at their site of production or the storage sites to the other parts of a plant that requires nutrient so within phloem students as you can see this is the longitudinal section of our phloem so within phloem Sugar travels from area of high osmotic concentration and high water pressure which is called as source to the region of uh, low osmotic concentration and low water pressure which is called as sink. Osmotic concentration it refers to the concentration of solute or sugar in this case where the concentration of solute is highest so is the osmotic concentration okay. So this was an overview of it. Now we'll talk about the transport, how it goes, how it is redistributed from source to sink. So it is a highly specialized process for distributing photosynthesis products, other organic compounds such as metabolites, hormones and some mineral nutrients, okay, which is redistributed from source to sink. I hope it is clear to you now that this is the phloem that transports sugars and other items and in angiosperms as you can see it has uh, four types of uh, cells such as sieve tube, element, parenchyma cell, companion cell okay so these are the supporting cells sieve tube element it contains a sugar solution see this is the sieve tube element which uh, conducts sugar solution sieve tube cells they are surrounded by various support cells such as parenchyma cell companion cell bundle sheet cell so these are the supporting cells okay but it redistributes from source to sink source as i told you that uh, it has high osmotic concentration and high water pressure and region of sink it has low osmotic concentration and low water pressure okay i hope it is clear to you now so we'll talk about the source and sink in detail so what is source source you can say it is a nutrient rich region that supplies sugars for the rest of a plant which is called as source source it include the leaf where sugar is generated through photosynthesis as you can see that this is leaf and uh, by the process of photosynthesis it makes their own food so source it includes leaf where sugar is generated through photosynthesis when they are high in supplies the nutrient storage area such as root and stem can also function as sources and in the sources sugar is moved into phloem by active transport in which movement of substance across cell membrane require energy expenditure on the part of the cell. So this is the source cell which is a zoom view of this leaf as I told you that uh, leaf it acts as a source because uh, it is a nutrient rich region that supplies sugar to the rest of a plant body. Okay. So this is the sugar uh, which is uh, being generated here in the leaf and it is actively transported into the sieve tube member see this is the sieve tube element of a fluid so sugar which is uh, synthesized here in the leaf it is actively transported into the sieve tube member of the fluid and water flows by osmosis okay like this and this is the sieve plate that has perforations in it that uh, allows the movement or conduction of sugar molecules from 
high osmotic uh, region to the low osmotic region which is called as sink cell okay so here it goes to here uh, so this is the higher water pressure at the source that forces phloem sap to move towards the sink this is the sink area which you can say that it is a root or any uh, storage organ such as seed okay so they are sink cells so higher water pressure at the source it forces the phloem sap to move towards the sink so this way it moves towards the sink and uh, sugar is unloaded at the sink as you can see and water it returns to the source via xylem so whatever water remains here it goes to the source via xylem so this is the xylem and this is the phloem don't get confused with it and this blue arrow it is representing water and this red arrow it is representing food okay or uh, sugar molecules so, so sugar molecules it moves from source cell to the sink cells whereas this blue arrow it is representing water water uh, remaining water it returns to the source via xylem cell so this is the xylem which conducts water and minerals okay so source is uh, you can say that it is an exporting region that produces photosynthate above and beyond that of its own kind or own needs and what is sink students sink you can say that it is an area in need of nutrients such as growing tissue when they are low in supply and a storage area such as roots and stem can function as sink the content of the phloem tube it flows from source to the sink where sugar molecules they are taken out of the phloem by active transport as i just taught you that it requires energy expenditure so that's why it is uh, called as active transport students okay i hope it is clear to you now now how the growing parts of a plant are provided with sugar to synthesize new cell that's the main question that pops up in our mind like how the growing parts of a plant are provided with sugar to synthesize their new cell so a system of vascular tissue it runs through all plants right and it in evolved as a response to the increase in the size of plant which caused in progressing separation of root leaf in space and phloem is the tissue that translocates or conducts assimilates from mature leaf to the growing or storage organs and roots okay so this is the leaf which is uh, source and this is the root which acts as a sink so from source to sink this uh, conduction takes place see this blue arrow it is representing uh, the phloem sap conduction from leaf to the sink okay which is the root here in this case okay so this is how growing parts of a plant are provided with sugar to synthesize new cells okay source and sink see students uh, this uh, direction it is by way direction or two way transport okay so direction of transport through phloem is determined by relative location of areas of supply sources and areas where utilization of photosynthate takes place six okay so this is source source is what it is leaf here in this case see students by the process of photosynthesis leaf they make their own food and to be more precise it makes sugar so this is called as source any transporting organ which is capable of mobilizing organic compounds such as sucrose or glucose or producing photosynthate in ex in excess of its own needs for example mature leaf mature leaf is what it is source a storage organ it is what it is source that uh, a storage organ it uh, acts as a source during exporting phase of development okay else it is seen that uh, storage organ it is uh, it acts as a sink also so let's see what sink is it is non photosynthetic organs that's why it needs uh, sugar from source area right so sink is non photosynthetic organs such as root tuber developing fruit immature leaf so these are sink 
which are non photosynthetic that means they cannot make their own food by the process uh, known as photosynthesis so this is non photosynthetic organ and organs that do not produce enough photo assimilate to meet their own requirement okay so this is source and this is sink so from source to sink it moves new growth is a sugar sink so this is how translocation takes place from source which is a leaf to the non photosynthetic organs such as root uh, immature leaf tubers and developing fruits okay the flow of water in plant is almost away from roots to leaves translocation of shoot growths can be in any direction depending on source and sink location and strength okay so this is translocation uh, process wherein this leaf acts as a source and uh, that prepares their own food by the process known as photosynthesis and from source it moves to the sink okay so translocation of sucrose can be in any direction depending on source and sink location and strength for example in beta martima which is also called as wild root wild beet root is a sink during the first growing season okay and in the second season the root becomes a source see that means it just gets uh, opposite in uh, different seasons first in the first growing season root used to act as a sink but now in the second season the root becomes a source that means it starts to make their food and sugars they are mobilized and used to produce a new shoot in contrast in cultivated sugar beets roots are sink during all phases of development okay so this is about it wherein a uh, by direction movement takes place now we'll talk about the source sink pathway that follows pattern okay although uh, the overall pattern of transport can be stated as source to sink right from that means from source to the sink transportation will take place take place not all sources supply all sinks in plant please remember that that not all sources supply all sink in a plant certain sources preferentially supply a specific sink and in case of herbaceous plants such as sugar beet the following occurs see this is the translocation theory wherein loading of sucrose that is a sugar molecule or to be more precise sucrose amino acids from the source takes place loading that means it will get inside the sieve tube element of a fluid and this is a companion cell which is in close association with this sieve tube element and then mass flow will take place this is the sieve plate which has perforation in it as you can see small dots these are the small perforations that allows conduction and then it uh, moves from one sieve tube element to another sieve tube element and then finally unloading takes place and it takes place at the sink which is also called as a storage organ such as immature leaf developing fruits roots so these are uh, these acts as sink okay so this is the translocation theory wherein loading of sucrose amino acid at source takes place and then unloading at sink takes place see students source and sink pathway it follows pattern now let's talk about it proximity of source to sink is a significant factor obviously upper na nature leaves they usually provide photosynthesis products that means by the process of photosynthesis it pro it uh, generates its own food which is called as photosynthate okay or photosynthesis product so upper nature leaves they usually provide photosynthesis products to growing shoot tip and young immature leaf which is sink okay so lower leaf they supply predominantly the root system and intermediate leaf they export in both the directions then we'll talk about the development obviously the importance of various sink may shift during night or during plant development root and shoot major sinks during vegetative growth that means during vegetative growth of a plant body root and shoot are the major sinks but fruit become dominant sink during reproductive development that means uh, during uh, reproduction in the plant body fruit become dominant sink that means it becomes as a storage organ 
wherein unloading of a phloem sap takes place okay so fruit becomes dominant sink during reproductive development and root and shoot they become major sink during vegetative growth okay vascular connections source leaf preferentially supplies sink with direct vascular connection a given leaf is connected by a vascular system to leaf above and below it of the stem okay then we'll talk about the modification of translocation pathway interference with the translocation pathway by mechanical wounding wounding is also called as pruning so vascular interconnection can provide alternate pathway for phloem transport so students now question is what exactly is transported in phloem we know that amino acids sugar to be more precise uh, sucrose molecule but what all is transported in phloem so sugar around concentration 80 to 106 uh, milligram milliliter inverse amino acids 5.2 concentration organic acid which is around 2 to 3.2 proteins 1.45 to 2.20 potassium which is 2.3 to 4.4 chloride which is 0.355 to 0.675 and phosphate which is 0.350 to 0.550 and magnesium which is 0.109 to 0.122 so these are the eight components which are transported in phloem such as sugar to be more precise sucrose amino acids organic acids protein amino acids are the building blocks of protein okay potassium chloride phosphate and magnesium these eight are the components that gets transported in fluid from source to sink sugar that are not generally in fluid carbohydrates transported in fluid are all non reducing sugars okay so uh, carbohydrate is transported in fluid are all non reducing sugars this is because they are less reactive Reducing sugars uh, such as glucose, mannose, fructose, they contain an exposed aldehyde or ketone group. That's why they are called as reducing sugars. So they become too chemically active uh, to be transported in phloem. That's the reason phloem does not conduct glucose, but at the same time it conducts sucrose. So sucrose is a non-reducing sugar that does not have exposed aldehyde and ketonic group okay now what is the uh, ketonic group or aldehyde group let's see see this is the reducing sugar which are not generally transported in uh, phloem the reducing groups are uh, aldehyde and ketone group so this is cho cho this is aldehyde group this is ketonic group which is co and this is glucose structure of glucose this is a structure of mannose and this is a structure of fructose so these three are reducing sugars that cannot be translocated in fluid okay so this uh, because it contains an exposed aldehyde and ketone group that's why they cannot be translocated in fluid because they being uh, chemically reactive to be transported in but at the same time non reducing sugars such as sucrose uh, is translocated in the phloem because it is less reactive because it does not has exposed aldehyde or ketone group the most common transported sugar is sucrose which is made up of glucose and fructose that means from combination of glucose and fructose sucrose is made this is reducing sugar the ketone or aldehyde group is combined with a similar group on another sugar or the ketone or aldehyde group is reduced to an alcohol okay which is d-mannitol most of the other mobile sugars transported contains sh uh, sucrose which is bound to varying number of galactose unit okay let's see uh, this is non-reducing sugar which is galactose uh, okay so these are the commonly translocated in the phloem this is sucrose which is this glucose plus fructose see this is fructose plus glucose so uh, this part is sucrose which is representing this then 
galactose plus glucose and fructose is called as raffinose which is another non reducing sugar okay then comes stachyose what it is this is galactose plus galactose plus glucose plus fructose so this makes stachyose then comes galactose plus galactose plus galactose plus glucose plus fructose that makes verbascose okay which is another uh, non reducing sugar okay and gets transported in the fluid just remember sugars you don't have to much worry about the other sugar molecules will uh, our main point of concern is sucrose so the osmotic effect of a substance is tied to the number of particles in solution so a milliliter of sucrose solution with the same osmolarity as glucose will have twice the number carbon atoms and they about twice the energy okay so thus for the same osmolarity twice the energy can be transported per air okay i repeat for the same osmolarity twice the energy can be transported per air as a non reducing sugar sucrose is less reactive and more likely to survive the journey in the fluid invertase which is also called as sucrase is the only enzyme that will touch it and this is unlikely to be present in the phloem sieve tube now other compounds such as water nitrogen uh, amino acids proteins okay so these are found in the phloem mainly in amino acids such as glutamic acid and amide such as glutamine and in the form of protein so these are the other compounds that Uh, can be transported in fluid students glutamic acid and glutamine they are important nitrogenous compounds in the fluid in addition to aspartate and aspartic okay now we'll talk about the phloem structure students this is the main component of the phloem is sieve element and companion cell which are in close association with each other uh, see this is sieve tube element and this is the companion cell see this is the companion cell which is in close association with each other so sieve elements they have no nucleus and it has only a sparse collection of other organelles and companion cell it provides energy for metabolic activities so that's the reason it has more mitochondria in it so named because end walls they are highly perforated they allow cytoplasmic connection between vertically stacked cells see this is the one sieve tube element and this is the companion cell and this is the region from where they both are connected with each other via plasmodesmata i have already taught you the structure in detail in my previous section of the presentation so you can refer to it for better understanding so it conducts sugar and amino acids from leaf to the rest parts of a plant body okay phloem transport it requires a specialized living cells sieve tube elements they join to form continuous tube so this is one sieve tube element this is another sieve tube element which is connected with a continuous tube and pores in sieve plate between sieve tube element they are open channels for transport so this is the open channel for transport and each sieve tube element it is associated with one or more companion cell so this is companion cell which is uh, associated closely with the sieve tube element as you can see and uh, this companion cell it provides metabolic uh, energy to, uh, or you can say it provides energy to carry out the metabolic activities so many plasmodesmata it penetrate wall between sieve tube element and companion cell as you can see this is the plasmodesmata which connects uh, companion cell and sieve tube element with each other so this is the close relationship which have a ready exchange of solutes between the two cells okay now we'll talk about the companion cell students the role in transport of photosynthesis products from producing cell in mature leaf to the sieve plate of a small vein of a leaf so this is the main function and synthesis of various proteins which are used in phloem uh, such as p protein see this is the p protein it contain many and many mitochondria because it has to carry out uh, uh, 
cellular respiration to provide cellular energy which is required for rapid transport and it is seen that three types of companion cell are found which are those ordinary companion cell transverse cell and intermediary cells so phloem transport it requires a specialized living cell now we'll talk about the types of the companion cell students so first is our ordinary companion cell wherein chloroplast with well developed thylakoid smooth inner cell wall relatively few plasmodes meta is seen which is connected only to its own sieve plate okay then comes transfer cell which is a well developed thylakoid it has finger like cell wall in group that increase surface area of plasma membrane for better solute transfer okay and both of these cells they are specialized for taking up solutes from apoplast or cell wall space so students have already taught you about the apoplast and symplast in the first section of the chapter transport in plants so you can refer to that from better understanding so these are the two types of the companion cell such as ordinary companion cell and transverse cell third is intermediary cell which appear well suited for taking up solutes via cytoplasmic connection it has many plasmodesmata that connects to the surrounding cell and most characteristic feature are that it contains many small vacuoles very small small vacuoles it has that ha that that has the capacity to hold water in it and it lack a uh, starch grain in chloroplast that's the unique uh, feature of a intermediary cell of companion cell and it is poorly developed thylakoid is seen in companion cell now what's the function it has a function in symplastic transport of sugar from mesophyll cells to sieve element where no apoplast pathway exists okay now we'll talk about the protective mechanism in phloem students sieve elements they are under high inter we very well know because phloem sap uh, it is in the continuous movement that's why it is uh, sieve tube element they are under high internal turbo pressure and when damaged the release of pressure causes content of a sieve element to surge towards the damaged side right so plant could lose too much of the hard work for sugar if not fixed so uh, that means uh, if you don't fix the release of a pressure then it can cause content of a sieve element to surge towards the damaged side so damage is caused by insect feeding on manufactured sugar or it could be wind damage it could be temperature such as hot temperature or cold temperature it could be damaged by pollution which causes a change in the light wavelength okay so these are the damage which can cause the content of a sieve tube element to surge towards the damaged side and plant could lose too much of the hard work for sugar if not fixed so this is the uh, main uh, mechanism now we'll talk about the protective mechanism and main uh, role it plays uh, by pea protein and cannabis so what is pea protein so it occurs in many forms such as tumor fibrillar crystalline it depends on the plant species and age of a cell so it seal off damaged sieve element by plugging up the sieve plate hole okay and the short term solution uh, is the pea protein so pea protein it acts as a protective uh, mechanism in fluid then comes scallose scallose is a long term solution pea protein was a short term solution that means for a short period of a time it can fix the problem it can fix the damage but on the long term uh, callose plays a main role this is a beta 13 glucan which is made in functioning sieve element by their plasma membrane and seals off damaged sieve element okay so this is these two are the protective uh, mechanism that takes place in or that plays a very important role in phloem damage so this was all about it in my next section of the presentation we'll be studying about the pressure flow model okay so till then stay tuned and keep watching wikipedia world videos thank you